Hey, welcome back. This is the Fender Chassis. My name's Scott, and today's project is to repair this aluminum transmission case. This is a T5 transmission case. It's aftermarket made by G-Force cast aluminum. This bearing retainer, we've got three or four bolts in, but this fourth hole, the, uh, the threads don't line up. And this is an aftermarket retainer, and when this thing was torn down, the owner had noticed that uh, the stamped steel factory retainer had, uh, this bolt hole had been slotted out. So it looks like this hole was drilled and tapped in the wrong location from the factory. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weld that hole back up, and we're gonna get it in the correct location. But as an added bonus, we've got a crack from here to here between these two bores. Normally what I would do is um, just take carbide burr and grind these things out, go back and weld them up. But since we've got these two repairs so close together, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the milling machine. I'm just going to go ahead and take an end mill, mill this out, go over against this hole, get all get uh, the threads cut out down to sound material, and then we'll weld up. From there, we'll uh, resurface this with an end mill about three thousandths high, and then we'll come back in and finish it off with uh, uh, some type of abrasive, and then we'll center up on these two. Um, these two bores and use a boring head to cut out the excess weld material. On the inside, that's an irrelevant surface and if we get too much build up, we'll just take it down with the die grinder from there. And the last step will be to go ahead and, and put this bearing retainer plate back on. We'll center up on this hole as best we can, drill and tap that hole and we should be back in uh, good shape. So let me get set up on the milling machine and I'll be right back with you. All right, so here we are all finished up. I went ahead off camera and took a little um, sandpaper and uh, cleaned these areas up as uh, good as I could or as good as I thought I could afford to. Now, some of this stuff through here uh, is somebody else's uh, handiwork, these uh, hammer dings. Uh, the weld seam is right through here and then through here and around. I missed videoing some of the the boring process and the only thing that i did differently than what would be normal is that i centered up on each of these holes but then rather than go ahead and 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 bore this out and take a chance of opening that hole up a little larger was i cheated towards the weld about three thousandths in the x and three thousandths in the y and by doing that I didn't actually cut with a large enough radius with the boring head. But what it allowed me to do was sneak up on, on the cut so that I didn't open this hole up too large. And in fact, I didn't remove any material other than, than the weld. Now I did come back and uh, blend uh, the edges of the welds in a little bit 
by hand. But as you can see, we've still got a pretty tight fit on this bearing. It will slip in. But it's very snug. And the same goes with the other bearing. Now it's a little looser, but nonetheless it is still, it's got a little wobble in it, but that's about what it had before. The main problem, what really brought this repair up was that bolt hole that was in the wrong location. And I think you can see that we're in a lot better shape now. And the tough part about this style of bolt is that you really, really have to be dead nuts on or the bolt will hang up on the side of the, um, of the countersink. But as you can see here with the other three in, it tightens right down into it and uh, it's just how it should have been. So, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how you do this different, or um, if you've got questions, let me know. And I'll see you on the next project.